Hello! Welcome back. It's time for a Food Journeyman update. Let's see how we've been getting on. Germany, how has our time at Hamburg been so far? Uh, mm. Right, so we made a couple of tweaks. Um, we'll see if they achieve anything for us. This is a worry, and this is a goal, and it's the type of goal we've been conceding constantly. There's all sorts going on, and now they are just trying it again, and they've done it again, and I, I like... I feel like it's a goal. I don't feel like, I mean, just. Just, oh, I just, like, I'm, I'm sorry, but is this like League fucking 2? Like, what is going on here? It's, 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 I think it's because it just feels like it's a long way from us winning anything. And that's like the point of the save is win things, move on. And we picked a club where I think I underestimated in the nature of the challenge um but we'll see we'll see we'll see up the hamburgers yes you know these hamburgers are quite similar to the ones they have at crusty bird uh. why are we two nil down how did that happen okay fine i thought we were doing well conceding a goal every 10 minutes here oh f why do we keep doing this I don't understand it. Can someone explain it to me? Because I don't understand it. I do not want to play Bayern Munich every single fucking friendly. Like every time we have a friendly, my whoever, I don't know, is like, I'll play Bayern Munich. No, I don't want to get battered by Bayern Munich as a friendly. That is not what I want to do. That is just a stupid idea. And I don't want to do it is our starting left back and he's been off and that's been one of the weaknesses in the team i mean that is something to bear in mind Ooh, that is quite a bad tackle it's not a red though oh piss off seriously nothing from that apparently and that's the end of the game it's another one nil loss Ah, uh, bloody hell. Why do we play this game? Just blow the whistle. Yeah, we've not been having a great time, to be honest. We've done two seasons with Hamburg now. And our second season, we finished 14th on 37 points, which marginal improvement on the previous season, where we ended up finishing with 34 points in 15 narrowly avoiding that relegation playoff and all of this is a bit disappointing because when we came to hamburg they were 11 and they'd just been promoted so we expected to be a bit of a struggle but we hoped that we could push this mid table team onwards and upwards and it's just not happened it's been two difficult seasons and if you look at the schedule um just just painful really um this was the first year where had a little bit of a good run in here. In fact, let's get rid of the non competitive ones. We had, you know, th there were moments of unbeaten runs, but not stringing so many wins together. Last season, a few more wins, but also more losses. Just narrow margins in these games, narrow margins in these games. And as we come into this season, we're hoping that maybe we can do something a little bit better, but it's just been hard going. And so trying to find a way to get this team to win has been the challenge. And I'm going to talk you through what's happened in the transfer window that just passed, which is our third transfer window with Hamburg. We have assembled the team that you see before us. And for those of you who are watching on Twitch, 
um, twitch.tv slash Jane Thoughts, you will recognize a few of these players, but I'm going to just introduce you to the whole team and then I'll mention some of the signings. So, starting at the goalkeeper, Juan Calvo is an Argentinian keeper who we broke the bank for last year. £14 million, a lot of money for our club. Um, that isn't really getting much more than four million in transfer budget a year. We're having to sell to buy. Um, not a bad first season. He's improved a little bit. He's learnt the language. We're hoping that Calvo is going to be the basics. I think he's an okay keeper. A little bit of potential. 23 years old, Argentine. And, um, good determination. Reasonable leadership. He's all right. Then we get to the right back. Amen. 19 year old. Wonder Kid, really, really, really good player. And he was actually out for a lot of the second half of last season with an injury. But you can see that rare combination of a fullback that can do acceleration, pace, but can also cross, tackle. Nine's okay, you know, but the anticipation, the concentration, the, the jumping reach, the, there isn't a real significant weakness here. And his speed is crossing his dribbling for the Bundesliga is pretty good and if we look at the overall report we can see that four star is a leading Bundesliga player so he should should be pretty good. Giuseppe is a player we brought in last season that we had pretty high hopes for. Um, 18 jumping reach. There are some issues with the attributes but generally got it where it counts and last season no goals and 26 starts a 6.7 not the best but if you look down here, you can see he's got a goal in the cup. That's what this is down here. Frank Cam covering up. Goal in the cup. Four goals from four non-competitive appearances so far this season. So our boy Giuseppe, with that 18 jumping reach, beginning to be a threat at corners. And that is mostly because of this guy who we're now going to jump to, which is our probably our most important signing. We got in early for this chap. The Romanian. Al... Al... Alcu? I don't know, my Romanian's not very good. But we've brought him in. Again, should be a good Bundesliga player. Um, mostly for those technicals and those mentals. The anticipation, the decisions, the flair, the off-the-ball, the vision, the work rate, the technique, the passing, the long shots, first touch, free kick taking, and most importantly, corners. A good corner taker. No physical attribute weakness there. A little bit of potential, maybe. But he has been, hopefully, the difference maker to our team. And you can see it was... It was the first round of the cup, so you don't read too much into it, but already performing well. So hopefully he's going to make a difference. Rojas, 19-year-old uh, Paraguayan. Um, lots of potential, already developing quite well. We were using him a little bit as a fullback when we had some depth problems last season, but developing, I think, into a pretty good left-footed centre-back. He has competition now. We've brought in some centre-backs towards the end of the window, but those two were the ones that were kind of performing at the end of last season. We're giving them a go. Um, Barella is our new left back. We umdenard about which left back to sign for a long time. Ended up going with Barella. There were some Wonder Kids out there. There were some fast players out there, but there weren't players that had that kind of defensive solidity. That Bar Barella, Barella? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, he brings a bit of solidity. Big games. Reasonable quality player acting as that defensive fullback on that side if we look here. So more defensive, more support to cover the roles. So that's the back line. We did have a player called Wensleydale Campervan. Uh, here he is. He's now at Bournemouth worth 30 million. We sold him for 15 million pounds. Um, real name is Wensley Campervan. Uh, but Wensleydale Campervan to us. He was our defensive midfielder. So replacing him has been one of the big challenges. But we have managed to do that, I think, with this chap in part. Jose, um, six foot one, not the best, but a little bit of potential there. Uh, likes big matches. I like the decisions. I like the physicals. There's a few weaknesses there, but he is a defensive midfield option. Another defensive midfield option who's being phased into the team because he's a little bit injured is Nicole. Um, and he hopefully will compete with Jose for that position. Um, slightly worse on the physical, slightly more potential. There's some injury issues, but he is a Bulgarian player who was very cheap um, from uh, CSKA in Bulgaria. 
So he's another potential option. Couple of players that can play in that position. While we're talking about that position, we'll also talk about Asparella. Asparella was a t signing we targeted as an improvement for centre back, um, but he is, ends up being potentially a more defensive option at the right back or a more defensive defensive midfielder or a centre back cover. We'll see as the season goes on. He was quite an important signing for us. In the end, we got him for 1.7 million, which we quite like. I thought he might be a starter. I'm now thinking he probably isn't. So we'll have to see if that plays into his star player. Um, he's going to get so mad. Uh, but if he doesn't, he might have a, a role to play as a squad player in the team. Um, moving on to the midfield, Riss, Ristovic, who was a signing that we made in the January last year. 3.6 million release clause triggered from the Serbian team. From the Serbian team. Um, he is currently playing as our Carrillero. Sometimes we play him as the box-to-box. -box. Pretty good physicals, really good mentals. No real deficiencies in the technicals. A little bit of potential that has disappeared, but as a squad player, again, likes big matches. It's one of the things we've really been trying to change in this team. Lots of players that didn't like big matches, we've moved them on. We're trying to change the mindset of the club. Already showed you Alec up here. So let's talk about some of the other options in these positions. Bishop. Comes in on a free, I don't know where he was, Sheffield, no, Arsenal, comes in as a free from Arsenal. So Bishop is a rotation option, hopefully. Um, he's a bit small, he lacks that height, he lacks that strength, but he does have good tackling, good technique, kind of got the mentals and the technicals to play as a Carrillero, as a Mazala. Probably he could play as an advance forward, but for me he's a rotation player and... I think he's happy to be there, yes, happy to be a squad player. So Bishop is kind of your your player that you bring on if you're in need of a bit of help. Another player here who's very good, in my opinion, is this chap, um, Ayan Zakho, Zakirov, who is a Bulgarian, um, Turkic Bulgarian, and he is from Besiktas, and he is got really good potential and apparently really good ability. I don't know quite how I feel about that. He's kind of recovering from an injury right now. He might take some time to settle. Um, but potentially a good player to can play. Maybe as an advanced playmaker. Maybe in the midfield. Tackling needs to go up a little bit. But the work rate is good. Hopefully those physicals will go up a little bit. He's another option in there. We've got quite a lot of depth in the midfield because of him. And then the last piece of the puzzle really is this guy. Alassane Usklund, who is our Swedish chap. Really good first touch, the flair, the technique. He has been playing quite successfully as a shadow striker for us at times last season. If we go through, he was one of our better players last season on a 7.12. We really struggled when we didn't have him in the team. 10 goals, 8 assists, 6 players of the match. He's currently on the bench because with that flair, with that first touch, kind of lacks some of the supporting ability that I think that Aleku offers us, um, even though he's better in some areas. Um, but also he can play as a support striker, as a, a deep line forward, false nine, advanced forward. Lacks the kind of physicality I like in my strikers, but he is kind of the game changer this season, hopefully. Um, and he can also play in the midfield if we're feeling a little bit ambitious. Doesn't have the tackling, but if we're, if we're against a team uh, and we want to play a player in there, we can play him in the central midfield as well. Other bench options that haven't been mentioned yet, with that before we move on to the strikers, Kamil Kulawek. I tried to sell him last summer, didn't sell him, and then in the end we were very glad we didn't sell him because it was pretty important to us, ended up making 27 starts. Um, his ability is not that amazing, uh, but he just seems to perform quite, that is a completely different player. <laughs> He just seems to perform quite well. I think it's the physicals, the jump and reach is a bit of a problem. But otherwise, he's he's an okay option and now he's hopefully going to move to being a squad player. The other option we have here as well is Samuel Likis, that is his real name. Um, bright young centre-back from Australia. Uh, he's been in and around the team a little bit the last couple of seasons, played a couple of friendlies. And Likis is hopefully a kind of rotation kind of option. A backup, he'll develop as the season goes on. He's worth a reasonable amount of money. We signed him for 26k, so bargain. Um, so that's Samuel Likis. Um, other options in defence. 
we've got this young chap uh, who is from Slovakia. Um, he's hopefully going to develop. He's only two star. Got some issues, but he is also only 18 and he had a release clause that was less than a million. So we punted for him. So he's hanging out in the squad as a potential backup option on that right hand side as well. Bart is a player we brought in last year. Pretty good potential. I don't think he's going to reach it. He's had a, I think he tore his hamstring last season. Unfortunately, he was having a reasonably good loan at Ingolstadt and has kind of reduced himself down again. That's probably it. Our backup goalkeeper is Franz Fries, and he's he's a he's kind of lacking, but um, he had a reasonably good first season. He was only 1.3 million, and then he's dropped off a little bit uh, last season, and so we've slowly replaced him with Calvo. So let's talk about strikers, and the first striker I'm going to talk about is Kuba Kuba, who we brought in from Manchester United last summer for six million pounds. Pretty good physical attributes on Kuba Kuba. And we tend to play him, we brought him in as a target forward, we've shifted away from that. Um, but you can see he's got the jumping reach, he's got finishing, he's got technique, he's pretty good. But what we've also been doing recently is moving him occasionally into midfield in that Metzala attack role. He's pretty good at that and um, that might be where his future is because we've brought in a few strikers this summer that could probably challenge for him. Before we talk about them, Let's talk about the strikers that are here from last season. Jose Estrada, one of those players that hasn't quite developed as quickly as I would have liked. We brought him in for 1.6 million from Colombia and he got seven goals in 29, which is pretty good. Um, but um, he's really gone on and developed a little bit more this summer. And you can see with the teamwork, um, the finishing isn't great, but as a support striker, He's okay, and he, he is putting it in the back of the net. Um, we've got round the keeper and play one and playing one twos, which really helps to compensate for that eleven finishing. The other player that is currently on the bench that we had pretty high hopes for, but hasn't quite delivered, and I can't work out why, is Janovic. Now those physicals and the technicals and the mentals for the role that we play him in in his advanced forward make me think that he should be more than a one and a half star player for this squad. Um, let me just update this on the side, but he's not he's not really performed. Eight goals from 27 appearances, not bad. This might be the year for him, but we have brought him in some competition, and that competition is in the form of Fahid Hamed, who is a fickle, volatile, and confrontational striker. What could possibly go wrong? Um, but he was available on a free and he, I think I just kind of like him as a potential option there as an advanced forward. He likes big games, um, he kind of lacks the finishing but physically he's very good. Maybe he's more of a winger really than a striker, um, but as an advanced forward he's done okay for us and in, in non-competitive games he has, he has performed okay. So he's another option for us at the end of the day, he was available on a free. So if we sell him for even half of that value, we'll be pretty happy with that. Um, the other striker we brought in that's in a similar kind of mould is Jose Camar Camargo. Um, he's a similar kind of player, slightly better finishing though, um, but not quite as developed. Uh, he rounds the keeper as well, quite fast. Another one of these sort of not not much to write home about advanced forwards but you can see you know he's fairly cheap so we, we took a punt on him hopefully he'll develop if he gets up to one star one and a half stars he'll be all right he's only expected to be a squad player so we'll see the big striker signing was juan david yeeps i believe that's probably something i don't know if that's how you say it um he's our new support striker and i think he looks really very good playing as a complete forward you can see the physicals are good, he's got that jumping reach, he's got that strength, but he can also finish. He attempts overhead kicks, likes to lob the keeper, plays with back to goal, try first hand shots. I was a little bit worried about some of that, but at least in the non-competitive games and that first cup game, he's looked pretty good. Six goals in non-competitive games, one goal in the cup. He seems to be working quite well. There are probably better long-term options out there, but actually for now, to take us hopefully to the next level, he is a good option. And right at the end of the transfer deadline day, we also signed a couple of other players. So those on the bench that I haven't spoken about yet, we've got Jeffrey, 
So Jeffrey came in for 14 million from Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux got relegated, which is why we were able to get him. We could have got him cheaper, but he didn't have a release clause. Currently valued at 50 million. So that's pretty exciting um, that he's a bright young centre back. He's expecting to be a star player and he's got, um, yeah, he's going to want to do that. So we're going to hopefully phase him in. I see him fighting Giuseppe for that position in the team. He doesn't quite have the same physicality, unfortunately, but um, he hopefully has a role to play moving forward. And Hidalgo is another player who's been on the verge of leaving so many times, but hasn't yet left. He's just our cover option on the left and the right. He's got plenty of experience. He did the job for us last season. Nothing particularly special. And I think that's probably everyone. Unless I forgot to show you Fab Lolly, which I think I did. So Fab Lolly was a player that we um, bought for 30 million, which to be honest, was a brave. He's also on 75,000 a week. Kind of just hoping someone buys him for 50 million, but it's not happened yet. Um, he's okay. He's our main Metzala. He's pretty good if you look at his, his he's kind of 6.8, you can kind of cope with those performances. He could do with getting a bit better, but he still has that potential to grow into. Uh, he is good enough at tackling to play in central midfield, and he's quite settled within the squad. This is what the dynamics look like hierarchy-wise. So many changes, so often has led to no team leaders, which could be one of the reasons we're struggling a little bit. The dynamics aren't completely balked, but hopefully they will develop over time. Managerial support, club atmosphere are all kind of okay. Nobody really opposes me, no one really loves me, but as the season goes on, hopefully that will change. And um, in terms of players that went out last summer, again, for those of you who watched the stream, you might so know some of these. We sold Murky Roller Cola, after a few million. He's worth a bit more now, but he just wasn't quite working out for us. Um, Sacco, again, in, on some level a good player, but he was kind of wasting our wage budget. We wanted to reinvest it. Um, didn't really put in any great performances for us last year, so we'll see how he does at Frankfurt. Some young players here. Benjamin Thomas we got rid of once his potential dropped off. He was a pretty important player as a Carrillero or a DLP. One of the reasons we've lost a little bit of that squad cohesion is that he had a lot of links with the other players. So we might regret that. We'll have to see. Um, Henrique is on loan. He was a free transfer, but we ended up paying a lot of wages for him. So we're hoping that we will um, be able to offload him at some point. And then we've got the young striker Victor Fafara, who is on loan at Championship Leicester. Not sure he's going to make it. We'll see. And Marvin Bertram a play that we've tried to get rid of a few times because as much as I kind of like his physicals it's never quite done it for us 6.6 .6 in the first season 6.7 in the second season we'll see how he does on loan either we'll sell him or maybe he'll find his form again but a little over the hill at 27 probably not a top tier Bundesliga player so that's the squad you've been updated on the squad and we'll also show you the opening game of the season. But before that, we've just got to quickly talk about something else. I am also, don't really know how this happened, managing Jamaica. And you may say, well, OK, hamburger, obviously burgers. Why the hell are you at Jamaica? Reggae, boys. Reggae, reggae. Chicken, give me a bit of Levi roots. So we're at Jamaica and we've got a bit of an interesting team. I'm sure we'll get to know them over time. Uh, our best player is... This centre-back, pretty good actually, he could fit into the Bundesliga team, I think. I think he'd do alright. Um, where is he actually? He's actually at Swansea, I assume in the Championship. And then we've got a Ram Doita, who's at Clermont, which I think are in the top tier of France. They are indeed. So he's, he's one of our other key players. I won't go through all of them. The only one you want to look at, you'll have to drop in on the stream. This is our goalkeeper. Hopes for them is to qualify for the next uh, World Cup. That's a long way off because we've just had a World Cup, which crushingly France won. Ugh, we wanted Mexico to win that, but hey ho. But we hope that maybe we can win our Nations League. That would count as a trophy if we could get to the top of this. So we just need to beat Suriname and Canada. That feels possible. Canada are currently ranked 44th in the world. We are currently ranked uh, something. 25th so we'll see maybe we can beat Canada 
and hopefully we'd beat Suriname and then easy. Be nice to win something after years of misery with Hamburg. The other thing that of course they could be trying to do if we go into this competitions page, I don't know, I don't know where it is on the Nations League. Um, yeah, we're going to try and qualify for the World Cup, try and qualify for, there we go, conferences. So uh, North American qualifying, hopefully we'll do that. Nations League qualifying, and then I guess at some point there's going to be some kind of whatever the equivalent is of the Euros, North American Euros sort of thing. Um, but yeah, winning the World Cup with Jamaica not likely to happen, but we'll count qualifying for major tournaments or maybe getting out the groups for major tournaments as a trophy with Jamaica. But I've talked through the team. It's been about 20 minutes now. That's quite a lot. Let's play a game, shall we? Should we, should we play a game on YouTube? We've not done that in a long time. This is the team that's going out for the game, the one that I've introduced you to. This is the tactic, which we've worked on a little bit. Neil's been my tactical consultant, as well as people in the chat. Um, hopefully now it's going to work. We've had problems with not having enough possession, not having enough creativity. We will see. We This is a derby game, by the way. So this is a very important game for us to win. We will get grief from the fans. Um, so I'm going to say we expect to win and we're going to go out there and see what we can do. We obviously did very, very well in our first game, but it was against a, a semi-professional lower league team. I don't think they said what league they were in. That was our first game in the cup, so we're not reading too much into that. This is the real challenge. What I want to see is us beating a team in the Bundesliga that we're supposed to beat, because that is not happening. Um, we we basically always lose to the big teams and then we don't manage to beat many of the teams around us and that needs to change the season it needs to be occasionally drawing or beating the bigger teams and then hopefully managing to get the better of some of those teams in the bottom half we'll see a couple of free kicks so far and Alaku is doing pretty good with them as we get eight minutes into this game Giuseppe amen Jose Estrada and if that is a goal which I think it's offside that's a very good goal let's see what VAR has to say it is a goal amazing absolutely delicious absolutely delicious goal fantastic so that's a pretty good start to this game Estrada heading it in lovely lovely stuff and that puts us third this is the type of thing we've not been seeing in the last two seasons is us looking in control looking strong we don't want to read too much into this we are playing one of the weakest sides but if we can get a good confident win at the start of the season i will feel very very good about that and we now have a corner which nearly goes in the back there look at that clock ticking something to look out for in the season preview is wolfsburg have apparently the best player in the league and what on earth has just happened there we've just scored absolutely another goal delicious. absolutely delicious what happened there again it's the quality of the corner taker that's making a huge difference the clearance doesn't quite go out and jose gets lucky although i would say it maybe was going to go in anyway but that's two nil 20 minutes in yes come on what was I saying? I was saying that Wolfsburg have apparently the best player in the league and are predicted to finish second. I'll believe it when I can see it. Um, but so far, we are completely controlling this game. We've got all the possession, we've had all the chances, all the XG. Um, they're on 0.01. <laughs> um, having a lovely time. Uh, the only concern is Rojas at the moment. He's probably going to come off at half time. Whether we move Giuseppe over to the left to bring in um, our new golden boy, our French wonder kid centre back, or whether we go with the Colombian, I don't know. We'll have to have a think about that. Also, see that Amen as they're picked up a yellow. Hopefully, that won't be too much of an issue. I'm more worried about injuries than suspensions with him. But Estrada. And that, I think, is three before half-time. Is this season going to be different to last? I hope it is. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Amen. Zappi. Estrada. Lovely. Lovely, lovely stuff. I think their goalkeeper is a lot to blame today for their performance, but we'll take it. 
lovely stuff, outstretched arms, very happy. And then we are going to make a change. The change we're going to make is probably going to be either to move Giuseppe over to the left and bring Jeffrey on, or to bring Sprilla on. I think. Mm, probably gonna go with Jeffrey and then swap Giuseppe around but if we are gonna do that we just need to make sure that on the corners uh, we've got them set up correctly because we definitely want Giuseppe in the box so we'll make that change there and hopefully that will help. Second half. Surely we can't throw away a 3-0 lead, can we? Wanna add more to it? Pretty good start to the season if we can carry this one over the line. And it's another free kick. Is this gonna be four? Potentially top of the league if we do that. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't to be. We have scored a few free kicks. They're quite rare, aren't they? Estrada now, balling over the top. He has made it four. I didn't expect this. If this is what we can expect later on stream tonight, I will be delighted. This is incredible. Okay, four nil up. As we approach the 60th minute and all of the highlights are going our way. Fab Lolly trying for his goal. And I mean, who can blame him at this point? It's a free for all. And even this corner posing a threat to the opposition. Seven shots on target, four goals. Apparently their goalkeeper is on a 7.0, not from what I have seen. Right, let's stop at the 64th minute and think about who we want to bring on. Do give them a little bit of game time. I think probably Bishop can come on there. Uh, as much as our corners have been effective, I do want to give Oslund a run out as a shadow striker particularly in a game that we are with dominating quite well and we'll get kuba kuba on and some azala on attack as well i think that will probably go for us actually final change we'll make them all slightly risky we'll make them all get hilgado on as well so all the changes have gone through it's a little bit over the top to do that but we'll see uh, i think we can probably coast this one out if we get an injury now we're seeing the front two still looking good. Let's see a few more chances from them maybe, having made those changes, made a few too many changes, weakened the team maybe. We'll have to see. Another corner opportunity here, Jeffrey! Oh my word, Jeffrey has scored. It was possibly offside. I hope it isn't. It is! It's a goal for Jeffrey! Well, what a typical Wimbledon goal! I know it's probably not Jeffrey, but that's how I'm saying it. What would it actually be? Jeffroy? Jeffroy? Pretty good at French, but that's lovely. 5-0 against rivals. This is how we want to start. Carry this momentum into the next few games. And we are we're looking pretty good. How's that? For 90... 90 minutes, 92, 93, there we go, look at that, lovely stuff, and that is a outstretched arms, what a win, what a performance, have we actually assembled a team that's half decent? Maybe we have, and if you want to watch our continued adventures, we will be on Twitch tonight at about 8pm, 8.30 well, hopefully we will be carrying this on. We'll do a few more games. But that is the start we want. Top of the league. And a pretty good performance from a number of our players. I imagine that's probably going to help. Dynamics, there we go. Club atmosphere's jumped up massively. So yeah, let us know how you think we're going to do this season. Let's return to the season preview. I don't think it updates after one game. But um, yeah, we're expected to finish 14th. I, Conference League, I would love us to qualify for the Conference League. 
that's been the aim for a long time. If it will happen is another question. Um, but I'm feeling optimistic and I hope you are too. And I hope you have a wonderful Thursday or whenever you're watching this video. And I will see you soon. But, you know, that's just my thoughts. <laughs> can't do it. I can't do it. That's just my thoughts. It's JM Thoughts. No, um, have a good one. Bye.